Hello and welcome to the Back Nine coverage of the 2017 Ledgestone Insurance Open. Um, I'm Paul McBeth and we're joined once again by the TD himself, Nate Heindold. How are you doing, Nate? Good, good. What are we going to call this? McLedge commentary? I don't even think we should try. <laughs> but uh, we got Josh right here just showing us how it's done. I mean, he's, and you know, the reason why he is winning is because he is not going OB, Paul. That's very true. Uh, I think up to this point, we're only nine holes in. I got at least four OB strokes. And I think for the tournament, he may have two, maybe three. That's that's usually the winning formula. That is That it is. Hole 10, Paul, this is different from last year. We wanted to get this hole a little more safe with the road there. Now it's, people ask for kind of a, a couple open shots to watch the disc fly, and here it is. Yeah, I, I like this change. I mean, it says 500 feet, but I think it plays a little bit less, or we're just throwing a lot further. Uh, but I heard Josh is just putting this hole under the basket every time, putting a shot right there every time. That's, I mean, that's good, right? Yeah. You want to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I've put it close the first two rounds, but I, Josh throwing it 500 feet, I mean, I know he hasn't played in a while, but Impressive. he's still got it. Yeah. He's still got it. It probably plays 470. It's a little bit downhill. You can see the tee there. It's a great gallery for, you know, a Saturday afternoon, but you can see the tee. It's a little downhill. Yeah, it's a it's a fun one to unleash on. You know, after you have to pinpoint that island hole, uh, this is one where you really just get to rip it. You got those trees on the right. Are those new? Nope, they're they've been there. We just haven't pushed the green over that far until this year. Okay, yeah, they they come into play. Uh, as you can see, Yuli caught a little that little one right there. But if you want to throw that that spike hyzer with the right-handed backhand, those trees do come into play. But uh, you're looking to go right in front of them and hopefully sneak it under that basket and avoid the water. Yep, I think Ricky's trying to make this one. I think he's he's frustrated. He's trying to put this one up there, and that's a. I mean, those are. You guys made that look way too easy. Yeah, I mean, he's Yuli's right here, maybe twenty feet, and that's the furthest on a five hundred foot hole. So you guys are all. I mean, star birdie here. They're probably there may not have been one more the rest of the day. Yeah, Rick. I mean, you can still see his, he's frustrated after that five on the last hole, which you know missing one in the circle will will get Rick a little upset, but. It's a good comeback, you know, getting that getting that birdie after the five, and uh, yep. Yuli, Yuli getting the birdie after the four, and me as well. So um, we're chasing down a, a guy that's not not really looking to let the lead go. If he doesn't start throwing OB, I mean, this could be over. I mean, if he's not going to make mistakes, no one's going to catch him at this point in time. He's seven ahead of Ricky, eight ahead of you, nine ahead of Uli, and, and the chase card at this time wasn't tearing it up. No, um, but yeah, now we got hole 11 240 feet this is probably the easiest hole on the course um it is the we got confirmation right here but 240 feet it, for me it's just a forehand throw it miss those telephone wires uh the other shot i've seen is a little putter backhand just going right at that tree right in front of the basket missing it either side and it's a really sticky green too so that really helps out helps out on this hole yeah i I mean, as you, as you said, the backhand's there, but it's a forehand. If Josh is throwing forehand under the basket, it's a forehand hole. I even saw MJ throw forehand yeah. on this hole. <laughs> I was just going to say, if MJ's throwing forehand, it's a forehand hole. And actually, 56% of the field birdied it. 6% actually were bogey or worse, which feels really bad on this hole. Yeah, and, and I think really that the, probably most of the OBs are going right, but a few might have hit that sign or that pole and kicked OB left, and that's, that's difficult, but... Uh, being this lead card, I expect at least four of them inside the circle. Yep. And Paul there, t great shot. Took it way wide with something very overstable. That's parked. Three forehands right there in the circle. And now we got Rick, who probably has the best forehand out of the group. Yep. And Rick just wanted to kind of say God bless the USA there. Just wanted to <laughs> touch that banner. But hits the tree a little short, but he's got a putt. Looks like just inside the circle. Yeah, it's got a straddle putt. Doesn't look like the side he usually likes to go to. And that was, I mean, he didn't quite get that up enough. Maybe the wind knocked it down. And here's one just just inside the circle. Um, you utilize that tree really well right yeah. there, that low-hanging branch, yep. and kind of had to go through it. Yep. And that was a good, I mean, after the water tower hole, birdie, birdie for you, birdie, birdie for Paul after he went for the water tower hole. So you guys are showing why you're, you're where you are. You know, some players, they make a tough hole like that on an easier par three. 
they shut down you guys birdie birdie yeah yeah i think you meant the island hole but yes sorry the, yeah the the, ninth the bridge hole. the bridge hole sorry um, yep four three of us went out of bounds took took two fours and a five and then josh birdied it but yeah to come back and get two birdies after that uh it's a great feeling especially leading into the water tower hole which this is an island hole probably the most difficult island hole those banners have moved away from it uh that made it i think a little too difficult but uh <laughs> this is this is one of the toughest par threes on the course probably has the most bogeys on out of any hole uh because it is such a small green and you got that tower which typically you'd think if you hit the tower it's going to be safe but usually it hits that tower rolls ob so and, and my thought behind this hole was if you hit the tower it's not a good drive you want to get around the tower so hitting it too high like that is not a good drive and josh just that's a great drive actually 40% of the field had bogey or worse in this hole. And so that is, it is a very challenging hole and that's, that looks like a great line. Yeah, I'm, I'm really just following Josh. I went off the tower though. Um, and the only way the tower helps is if you're hitting the back side of it. Yeah. And, yeah. and it kicks it a little bit forward. So I got the green flag and I was happy with that. Yep. Um, so Yuli threw his shot and he was saying just, what was he saying? He was saying get down or something or hit the tower. Little did he know he was going past Wow, the tower. off the tower, almost in the basket. He actually thought he was going to hit the front of the tower and roll out of bounds. Yeah. And so that was, and I did too, and that was bank shot. Almost in. That was cool. Yeah, that, that's a great shot. Um, now, I mean, three, three out of the four so far <laughs> in the circle, so... If Rick can put this one in, I think this might be the only card to put all four drives in the circle. And he hung it out a little wide, but it's moving left. And that's, wow. You you may not see a group do that. You want to go wide. That was a great line by Rick. And Josh for another birdie. I mean, that was, all dead, does. That was dead center. That's all He's, he does. He stays in bounds, makes birdies. He's playing so good right now, and it's it's awesome to see. And another birdie. At this moment, I actually heard Terry in the background talking about how uh, he might see a star frame on this hole, and I was like, "Come on, Terry! I haven't even putted yet." He's just trying to jinx you. He's trying to. <laughs> he's trying to make it more interesting. He wants a big comeback for the championship uh, Sunday yes. round. Star birdie on the water tower hole. I need to make that hole harder, I guess, Paul. Yeah, I don't think you ever pictured that happening when you designed that hole. No. But uh, four twos on that one, that's great. Lifetime warranty and 1% back to the planet. Tempercraft USA. Temper your thirst. Hole 13, Paul. This is my favorite hole in the course. It actually played, wow, 329 meters. Anyways, it played as actually much easier than it did the first two rounds. The rim was down. There were, you know, great chance for scoring. Actually, a quarter of the field birdied this hole. This is an awesome hole. Yeah, I think people are starting to figure it out uh, as the tournament goes along. It's it's really, it's really a mental battle uh, because if you want the birdie, you really have to throw over the water three times. And yep. if you have the option, you don't want to throw over the water three times. So uh, it's really just mentally getting over that and trusting your disc over the water. So uh, I think people are starting to figure that out and, and get more birdies here. But this is a fun par five. Um, it does have an eagle opportunity if you really want to risk it, but you have to go 500, 500. So. And, and you honestly, to get the, the, I wouldn't say easy birdie, you want to be right of this tree that we're looking at right in, off the bank, right where Paul is throwing to. You want to be just right of that because you don't want to play it down the left side of the fairway. You can birdie it, but it takes, it'll take a 500-foot third shot to birdie it going left of that. So the best angle is going water's edge, water's edge, water's edge. Yeah, and... Uh, like I said, that's that's just a mental battle. Yeah. You have to, you have oh, to yeah. get over and trust it. But uh, four, I mean, all four of those shots are, are in pretty pretty good spot. Um, you know, to throw it back over the water. Josh probably has the most difficult lie. Uh, 
having to go with a little lower line because of that tree, but he nailed it, you know? He does it throw after throw after throw, so. <laughs> yep. And we actually trimmed a few branches down in that first tree there. Last year, Josh would not have been able to do that, actually. So we actually, you can see oh, there yeah, where the branches are, we cut off quite a few just to give that shot a little more of a chance to, you know, be up there another 300 feet. Yeah, and Yuli right up there as well next to Josh. And, you know, the third shot's going to be very similar. Yep. Uh, but now you're trying to hit the basket, so. And Ricky actually went too far left and too far down the fairway, so he has to throw more of a spike, but that's no problem for Rick. That's going to be a great shot, a great spot. Yep. This is a true par 5, Paul. It is. I mean, it's you can eagle it, like I said, if you really want to go for it, but it has to be a desperate situation, I think, or you can easily throw 550 feet. If, if you were in the last round, maybe three or four behind there, and you were way clear of third, would you have gone for that shot maybe? Probably. Probably. <laughs> Probably okay. would have tried it. Um, but like you said, I'd have to be clear ahead of the people behind me. Because you were probably 575 there. Yeah, but I would, wow, that was close. Ricky, that was a great shot and not really the best roll away, but, no, but he's in, the, in circle. the circle, yeah. That's, I mean, with this with this green, um, they can roll down into that water pretty easily. Uh, I've seen a few do it. And that's really why I'm kind of just throwing a, a FD3 over a, over a mid-range or something. And, and I'm trying to play it up there high left and just make the putt down. Uh, I don't want to bring that water into play, sure. especially after how my round's been going. And, you know, honestly, that's a downhill putt. That's a lot easier than having an uphill putt. You are looking back at the water, but, wow, is he ever going to not throw a good shot, Paul? It's hard to catch a guy who's not th making any mistakes, but, uh, you know, you know, the three of us right here on the card are going to continue to push him and push him and, and try to knock that lead down um, with shots like this, you know, putting it right there in the circle and, and just continuing to put the pressure on him. I mean, all of you guys putting for birdie in the circle on a long par five. Oh, another one in the circle. And Rick's just, I mean, you know, he's a great putter. He's just having a bit of an off round with the putter. And that's a good putt for you. Looking right down at the water, you know, just great putt. Yeah, that that's one I hope to continue to get. I've gotten it the first three rounds, and, and today I think the, or final round, I think the weather's going to be a little bit not so friendly, but... Uh, this is Lake Eureka. Yeah. Uh, that's that's what we can expect here. So it, it adds to the factor of playing the Ledgestone Open. So that's it's part of the experience. And we've had pretty good weather. We had wind, obviously, yesterday. We avoided the rain for the most part. We had a 10-minute delay, maybe, or 15-minute delay first round. But hope for the best for today. And Josh, just another birdie. Continues to roll. And then uh, three birdies right there. Uh, Josh at 24 under. I mean, we're... A ways back, but we're continuing to fight with a 16 under and two 15s. And here's another new hole. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I really like this change. Um, par four, it used to be a fairly easy par three, but now it's 805 feet par four with a difficult tee shot and then another long water carry uh, second shot, so. And that lake, just thanks to Eureka for letting us shut down this park for a week. The lake is so beautiful there in the morning. And Josh, that's a little low, but that is that is a good spot to be in. That had some carry in it. He'll be about 400 feet from the basket there, maybe 425. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost thinking about where he's at might be a little bit better spot than if you were to carry it longer because he's got the flat spot down sure, there. You know, he's sure. got an easier run up. Um, I threw my shot right where I wanted, but I'm landing on the side of the hill now. So yeah. I got a little bit tougher, a little bit more difficult run up. Um, so Josh might be playing it there. Yeah. I, I don't know, but he's got that flat spot and uh, makes that second shot a lot easier. Paul throwing just a gorgeous hyzer flip. That is, I mean, that is way down there, Paul. He got well past where the first two drives landed. He's going to have a much easier second shot. If you can get way down there, it makes the hole a lot easier. And then Rick going with the unconventional roller here. I mean, th this is as aggressive as it gets. I mean, he has a great roller. I don't mind the play. And... Just a phenomenal bounce off that tree, though. He would have been fine in bounds, but now he's in a perfect spot. Yeah, right in the middle. And uh, here's Josh with his second shot. I would say he's about 400 feet away still. For sure. Oh, he's if not yeah, more. If four, not more. I'd say 425 at least for sure. But Crushing it long. 
just outside the circle. But uh, Good shot, though. Yeah, great shot. This, this is actually a faster green than I think all the rest of them uh, that are right there lakeside. This, this, one, likes to t this one tends to bounce and, and get some rolls, so uh, I'm focused on putting it high left again, keep it away from the water. And uh, with the hill angle, usually it'll move down left a little bit and got it just inside the circle. So That's I'm, it. I mean, that's... I wouldn't say it's a perfect shot, but it's very close to perfect because you don't want to mess with the right side. Yep. If you go in the lake there and don't come back, you could be throwing from a long ways away for your next shot. Exactly. And, and Yuli just watched my drive. I'm sure he's going to put a little bit closer towards the basket and seeing, uh, seeing that he can test it and just finish about the same spot. You guys, are make, side. you guys are making this hole look way too easy. This, this hole actually played, once again, the easiest it has all week. It only played a quarter of a stroke over par. Still a challenging hole with the distance, but it it was so calm today compared to yesterday. Yep, and wow, I mean, you guys are just the the. It's too easy. This this course is too easy, Paul. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it too easy, but I think I think we're just playing well here so far yep. on the back nine. And wow, Josh, now there's the one. There's your okay. Here's your chance right here. He missed the putt. Circles edge. That's very surprising. So I want to make this dead center. Make sure it has no chance of spitting out. Good putt. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought I made it look a little shakier, but no, I think you you know short left on these baskets is is gonna go in most of the time. And then here's Julie right there in the same spot as me, um, trying to get a stroke on Josh and just left a little soft left. He's so, he's missed a couple of putts soft left today. Yeah, he uh, he knew it as soon as he let it go. And Rick right here, probably about 16 feet, tapping out for bird. But two good birdies, and, I mean, they were putting at it. They're probably not too happy with those pars, you know, being as close as they were, but par's good on this hole. So there you go. That's hole 14. Moving on to hole 15. Josh has a seven-stroke lead on you, eight on Ricky, and nine on Paul. Hole so 15, a brand-new hole as well, Paul. What do you... uh? thoughts on this hole this is a good hole um you know i don't like that there's banda there but i understand why uh you know it makes this hole that much more difficult or else it'd be just an easy spike hyzer but it's a it's actually a pretty difficult part three you know that it's that long turnover with the ob long uh ob to the right and left so it does make it to where you have to throw a good tee shot to be in the circle um and uh this is this is one that you actually see all sorts of shots too i'm throwing a leopard three here on a soft turnover and that's good right yeah i'll take that any day these barrel holes i'm playing well <laughs> but you know you could throw the long turn turnover you could throw the roller like rick is or there's also the forehand yep um so all sorts of shots and and with ricky's sidearm i'm surprised that he you know wouldn't go with the sidearm here and as you can see that didn't hit anybody oh, just man. didn't quite get back in bounds yeah we thought it actually hit the rope uh from the tee box but yeah. i guess it was the cameraman that hit the rope so um Luckily, we got that cleared up. but uh, And this is a hole where you really probably can't get a mid-range there. I mean, most players probably have to throw a ferret driver. It, it says 315. It plays at least 360, Paul. I know when I played this, I texted you right away and said, your distance is off. <laughs> because it is it is a lot more uphill than it looks. Yeah. Um, uh, especially from, from when you're at the basket and you look back at the tee, then you realize it. But when you're at the tee box, it doesn't look that high. Uh, so... I think Yuli's ripping a fairway driver there and, and hoping for a little flex. That's and a that's, good shot. That's a great shot. 20 right feet in the circle. Yeah. And like you said, with, with what you said earlier with Rick's roller, I, I think he threw it because he threw a roller on the hole before and it worked out great. So he was kind of just filling the roller. But And he throws it on 16, I think, and and probably 18. I think he's just, he, he's throwing a lot of rollers. Yeah. And yeah, it is a surprise to see him not go to the forehand. So there you go. I mean, that was a tough putt to make, but. There's another stroke that you got back on Josh, elevated basket, and then that's a great, great birdie by Uli. Yeah, trying to trying to make a run on him, trying yeah. to make a run on Josh. Uh, he is he is up quite a bit at this point, but uh, it's not over. I mean, there's still another round after this, and and if I can get close enough, I know the final day will be fun. And at Lake Eureka, I wouldn't say anything can happen, but there are holes where two or three stroke swings are not uncommon. Yeah, when you have so much OB out there, uh, it's definitely possible to get some strokes. I mean, now I'm within six, which is where we started, back to where we started.
whole 16. Uh, I think this is the same as last year, right? It is the same. So question, how do you feel about, you know, with all the new changes, all the new stroke rules, how do you feel, you know, is this how you wanted the, the lead card or other cards to be playing your course or do you want it to be a little bit more difficult? I haven't seen many shots out here that I didn't envision. I didn't anticipate so many rollers, especially 14, 15, but I anticipated a roller here. Um, but I really like how the course is playing. Some of the drop zones, you know, are maybe too challenging, but I like the course, how it's playing. I don't know that I would change a lot for next year besides maybe a few drop zone changes. Yeah, and as a player's perspective, uh, I think this is the best the course has ever looked uh, by far. Uh, and it, it really is enjoyable to play because it is the challenge of keeping it in balance, but it's also the challenge of you have to throw good shots, you know. So a lot of courses you can get away with a little bit of, you know, errant shots and they stay in bounds and they're still in good positions. Here, if you throw a bad shot, there's a 90% chance it's going out of bounds. So uh, it keeps, keeps us focused. It, honestly, I think this is the closest to what the USDGC is and, and Rock Hill and, and Winthrop. So I, th I feel like that's kind of where you were going with the course design. And if that's what you're going with, that, that's kind of feel you're kind of get, getting with this uh, layout. And, and you're right, and what a great roar by Ricky, just hit that tree. But, you know, I like to see bad shots punished. And a lot of courses, if you throw a wide shot on a lot of open courses, it's an easy up and down for par. I don't think that's fair to the field. And you had a, just a tough angle here. You may have had a weird, crazy forehand line to get closer to the pin, but that was a dangerous line, so you probably would just wanted to play it safe and give yourself an outside chance. Josh threw a great roller, just snuck on the edge. And we'll see what he can do with this. Here's Paul, kind of hit the brush as well. He kicked out, fortunately. Yeah, one thing about this course, too, I, what I like is um, typically if you if you throw a bad shot, you can just, ooh, ooh. wow. <laughs> but what I was going to say is typically if you throw a bad shot, you don't have to think about your next one. You can kind of throw a hyzer out there and play it safe. But here, you can't really get away with that. You know, you, you have mandos right there to where it would be an easy hyzer where I'm at, but now I'm kind of difficult in a spot where I have to throw a flex shot yep. or control it. And then you got the downhill behind the basket that can easily take it out of bounds. I like that there's a lot of thinking on this course that you sure. have to make, you know, split second decisions, um, you know, because of because of the difficulty on these courses or on these holes. Um, so I, I think I, that's what separates the course from other courses like the USDGC and this course. And is it a lot of decision making, a lot of should I go for it or not? And you, had, you know, that was a 55 footer. You were obviously trying to make that. That was a good run, just a little bit right. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, like you're saying, it's it. it, it it's fun to have to think on the course and not just go out there and just, you know, throw the disc and just not have to think about it. But here, we have to make these decisions that are, do we risk losing our disc and not having it the rest of the tournament? Or do we play the smart shot and just try to have a 60-footer, 70-footer? Um, so so I really enjoy that aspect from a player's sta standpoint and, uh, you know, continue to see this tournament grow. So so thank you, Nate, for that. And, and, uh, and there are a lot of holes like that where you have to make – a decision of should I go for it or not? You know, I, th I think of hole six when you did, you know, the the long par four. You went for it and you got a birdie today, and and your card did not. So that's a hole where you you could lay up and say I'm not going to go for it, and that's what I'm going for. Yeah, and I, and I think that's why this there's such a stroke difference, you know, yeah. on, on holes like this. Like Josh is up seven now, but you know the three of us are in the in the same you know kind of the same score range because we're making mistakes, but Josh is taking the the smart shots and converting them. Or when he's going for it, he's converting those shots and he's getting stroke after stroke after stroke because he's not making those mistakes to where we might be going for the same shots but making those small mistakes and, and having two stroke swings. Um, so it's the risk reward and, and that's what makes these courses so much fun. So here's one that there is no <laughs> safe shot. There's no safe shot. That island is about 38 feet deep and about 90 feet wide. You just got to put it I guess right there, Paul. Yeah, that's that Rock 3X. That he's he's really loving that disc on those Heiser shots. Uh, but yeah, that that's pinpoint right there. And I got my Nova just trying to go straight at the basket. Um, yesterday I left a little short, so I'm trying not to do that again. Ooh. But I still Long. don't know if that would have made it. <laughs> I think it was probably a little short, just not quite enough power. Yuli, going you the big hyzer here i saw him throw this i thought he threw it into the tree from <laughs> eight i was on 18 when he was teeing this off i thought he threw it through the tree but that's exactly what happened yesterday so he's got that shot dialed anything on the green here is a good shot and rick he didn't like that as soon as he let it go i think it was tailing a little bit more left than he wanted you know but, as uh, soon as he threw it i thought it was ob and it had some carry i guess 
Yeah, stuck in stuck on that island. Like you said, 35 feet, I think, is how wide it is. And this drop zone, this is the easiest drop zone you have out there. Uh, it's little... still not it's still not easy, but yeah, it is the easiest one. Uh, yeah, I've seen a few people throw it OB with the forehand, so I just opt for the backhand there. Uh, so just, just have to take my four there and, and walk away while these three are putting for birdie. I'm sure you're frustrated. That's a great putt by Ricky. He doesn't look happy. He's had a, you know, not a superb round, but he's right there. But he obviously is trying to win. You're trying to win. Paul's trying to win. But Josh, at this point in time, has gone out, out of bounds three times. And I believe you've gone out of bounds 13 times. So that's the difference right now through three rounds is that, I mean, you're probably about the average with OBs. I'm sure, sorry, you're below the average. But Josh is way below the average, Paul. Yeah, and, and last year, I know when I won this tournament, we were talking about it in an interview or the press conference that I didn't go OB once at Lake Eureka for the two times that we played it. Yeah, Paul, you didn't. And that's, and you know, I thought about actually wrapping your RV with rope to, just to kind of spite you to say, <laughs> don't say that again. But uh, yeah, you, yeah, you shredded it last year. You're, you're playing well, just, you know, a couple more OBs, but whole 18, Paul, just beautiful finishing hole yeah it, it is um it's one of those ones where you got a lot of options off the tee you got the backhands i mean all, most of the options are down the middle you could go backhand forehand roller or go huge and around but i think most of the lead car will be off to with the roller um and it's kind of one of those ones where it's like on a hill so you have to land at a good angle because if it's got any cut line it could go in that water and if you have it too much cut you could be up in that playground or the, potentially the road so it still is a, a difficult roller and it's really hard to find a, a line for the second shot, too. Sure. We've actually trimmed a little bit out, and Paul, that not the best kick from the tree, but he'll be okay. Oh, under the bench. <laughs> Were you considering the big Anheuser route or just not the right win for it? Um, you want my honest answer? These Discraft banners are in the way. Oh. So I tried it yesterday, uh, and... It was a little windy, and the Discraft banner blew in the way as I was trying to throw my shot, so it kind of made me pull it over and threw my disc in the water. wasn't too happy about it, but uh, yeah, if those Discraft banners were a little bit more out of the way off the tee shot, I'd be throwing the throwing the big Annie, but I think this year I'm, I'm moving away from it and going with the roller and just trying to hope it's in a good spot and have a second shot. I mean, that, the roller is definitely the safer play um, than the big Anheuser, but you can... You're gonna, are you going to take a swing, Paul? I was thinking about it, but they're marked off, you know. Unfortunately, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't hop in there. There were some cones there blocking it, but, you know, I'm still trying to do my job. Josh just got that one a little too high. I don't know that, he, you know, he would have gotten there anyways, but that's in a decent spot to get up and down for par. Yeah, this is one. If, if you're not in the right spot for your second shot, it's kind of just play it for a par or hope you have a, you know, inside – inside the circle two, 60 foot or something look, but uh, it's really difficult to get to this green. As you can see, both of those shots have caught a tree so far. It's a really low ceiling, and it's a fast green. I mean, I'm stuck up against this pole right here, thinking I have no chance really at getting close to the basket. I'm just trying to put it, like I said, inside that circle two. But I absolutely hit my line perfect, but the disc didn't slow down. Where was oh, Michael for this geez. one? Just, just getting away for once. The unhittable man, I was hoping I hit him. That was a great looking shot from where you were, standstill, forehand. And Ricky just didn't quite get that one up enough. Yeah, you can see that all three of their shots were, were kind of got hit by something, like with the two tree shots and then one one into the ground. It, it is really a low ceiling shot. And then going right at the water, you're trying not to turn it over and give a stroke away like that. So I expect to see all three of their up shots pretty close. And Uli just threw a great up shot there. Ricky just threw a great up shot. And Josh probably, I mean, if he's close to that, he might even have a jump putt look. Yeah, probably about 90 feet. He's just laying it up. He, at this point in time, Josh is thinking, I'm I'm nine ahead. I'm not going to risk hitting the basket, rolling out of bounds. Yep. So you're, you're putting from 28 feet here probably? Yeah, right at the water. Not too happy because it went out of bounds, but no one, I still have to make this. And I guess they had to give someone a slow miss here. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'll take it here on the last hole, but... Uh, not how I wanted to finish, but as well how I wanted to finish after going out of bounds. So uh, I'll take that four. Josh tapping out par and finishing with the, you know, all all pars on this last hole. Um, and, man, Josh is playing well. And you had multiple holes today, OB, but still took a par. Josh just stayed clean. 
Yeah, Josh had that one bogey on hole yep. two uh, with his, I think, only out of bounds stroke on, yeah. the, on the round. So uh, he's keeping it in, ba- in bounds. Like you said, I think he's only had three OBs the whole tournament. So you can see that his three versus my 13 is basically the stroke difference right now. He's got a nine stroke lead over Yuli and I, and uh, 10 strokes over, over Rick. And then, you know, eighth, the second card is all at 13 under, and then the tie for ninth at 10 under. But again, a great round from Josh and pretty good rounds for the rest of us, but it, it, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Jomez Production and Innova Champion Dis and Discraft and the Ledgestone Insurance Group. And thank you, Nate Heinel, for being here and putting this show on. Thanks for doing the commentary, and we will see you guys for Championship Sunday.